Coming to you from sunny Orlando, Florida, welcome to the Paper Stack Podcast, where we cover current topics in the note industry, give you tactics for your note business, and talk with industry leaders to make you a better note investor. And now, your hosts, Brett Berkey and Rick Allen. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Paper Stack Podcast. Uh, I am Brett Berkey, and this is Rick Allen. That's me. That is right. And today we are going to talk about something that actually gets a lot of searches in YouTube. It's something that applies to not only real estate, but also notes yes. and, and all aspects of it. It's the strategy called cash for keys. And it sounds like what it, it sounds like what it is. You give them cash. It is what it sounds like. It's cash. <laughs> that's what you're trying to say. It is what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah. You're giving somebody cash and they give you the keys. That's right. The keys in this instance happens to be the house. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. It's a strategy used by a lot of note investors. Actually, one of the first times I actually wrote it along with you guys, we did a cash for keys. And luckily, the guy was a musician. So I was the guy who talked to him. Oh, I remember <laughs> that one. Yes. I talked his ear off and I almost bought all his guitars because he was selling stuff. For cheap, wasn't it? Yeah, well. Was. I remember you called your dad and he was like, yeah, was, we we're going to buy like he had a, he had a six string bass. And I was like, man, well, I, could, I, could, I don't need a six, six string bass, but it's rare, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to buy it for my brother, but. I don't know. Don't like them that much for the way a six reading base. No, I love them. But uh, yeah, so Rick, break down what the strategy is and why it's important and how it's used. Let's, let's start first for a lot of the searches on YouTube are for real estate specific. We'll like, talk both. Yeah. I talk real estate. I'll talk. So like you said, the concept is I'm going to pay somebody cash mm-hmm. to get out of a house. And that could be a tenant. Mm-hmm. That could be a homeowner. So if you're, if it's a tenant, you're probably a landlord. You're in the real estate space. You've got the house rented. You need to get them out for some way, shape, or form. Maybe they haven't been paying their rent. Maybe you'd like to sell the house and their lease is not up until October and it's May. And you're like, look, I'd really like to sell it right now into this insanely hot market. Mm -hmm. But we all know that most, maybe you don't know, like summer from May through or April really through August is like the summer buying season, spring buying season. And it cools off much easier to sell. But then in the fall, mm-hmm. when the kids are back in school, it's a little bit tougher. You have less of a feeding frenzy. So you don't necessarily always get the highest dollar amount, mm-hmm. right? So you may want to get somebody out mm-hmm. in May so that way you can capitalize on the summer months of yep. selling. So yep. a lot of different reasons why you might do it. Maybe it's just no good reason other than you need them out. You like to sell it now. You, you don't think you can do it with a tenant in there. Mm-hmm. That's one reason if you're on the real estate side. Now, if you're on the note side, you might be doing it in lieu of a foreclosure. Maybe you've already foreclosed. And they're still, they still haven't left. They're, they still haven't left. And so you either gonna, you're either going to evict them, mm-hmm. which is what happens. Once you foreclose, it's not, it's okay, I foreclose. You're out of the house now. Bye. See it. No. There's the next legal battle, which is getting them out. And, that can, and that's an eviction. You run into some things like in in northern states, Mm -hmm. it's really hard to evict people. Sometimes the judges are like, she's got two kids and it's it's January. And we're in Chicago and there's three feet of snow on the ground. Maybe you can wait till the spring when the snow melts. They're like, well, it's only three or four months. You're like, yeah, but it's three or four months. I need to get those people out because I want to sell it during to the summer, but I've got three months of rehab on the property that I need to do. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's when you got to start figuring in. Okay, is it makes sense to give them cash for keys? Yeah, you're at that point. You're thinking like time value of money. What's what it is? What is one hundred percent? And I'll give you some examples of times when we've given people, we've given people the spectrum. I mean, I've paid people five hundred dollars cash for keys, right? Five hundred bucks, and I've paid somebody twenty five grand. 25 grand. 25 grand. Wow. That's hard to, what, what was that situation? So that was a situation where the 25 grand, is that what you're asking yeah. about? Yeah, and I want to know about the 500, who, who, who just got it for five. Oh, well, God. That guy was guy, already moving out. No, the, the, the guy was, he was already out. We needed to get him out sooner. He looked like Billy Ray Cyrus. He had this long, what's it called? Long. Mullets? Yeah, a long mullet. But it was real nice. It was like shaved on the side and then it was like permed all the way down. I mean, that's in style nowadays. Dude, I, my kid just had a mullet. And he shaved it. Oh, good. He shaved it. I'm so proud of him for shaving. It was cool to have him. The rat, too. Yeah, it was funny. He was getting his hair cut, and the lady, I was like, yeah, maybe we cut the mullet. He was like, and he had texted this girl that he was talking to, and she was like, what do you think? Should I cut it? And she was like, yeah, go ahead and cut it. So she's like, she's, I'm Southern, but uh, yeah, you should probably cut it. 
So yeah. he, like, she started shaving it and she left from here down was like long still. Cause I don't know why she shaved all around. And so I took a picture of it and sent it to my wife and said, yeah, he said he's, this is the new thing called the beaver tail. He's going to leave this. And she's like texting over Bible study friends. Like, can you believe this thing, the beaver tail and this and that? And I totally had her go on it. And oh, I was wait. like, no, I'm just messing with you. So, um, so he had the Billy Ray Cyrus cut. He had the Billy Ray Cyrus cut. And we were just like, I needed him out sooner. And I was like, they'll give you 500 bucks. So we can be out by Friday. And he was like, cool. 500 bucks to him was good. So that was an easy one. And the 25,000 one? The 25,000 one. This one was interesting. We, it was on the east side of Orlando. It was, it was like a 2008, 2008 built home. Oh, wow. And this was like 2013. Okay. And the house is a drop, but it was like a 3,000 square foot house. I think we were, we bought it for, bought the note for a buck 25, a buck 30. And it was worth like 280 or 290. And these people were like digging their heels in. They didn't want to go. So we paid them 25 grand to sign the house over to us. Looking back, I should have modified their mortgage, but that's not what we're talking about. Talk about cash for keys. Talk about cash for keys. Cash for keys. And so at that point, it made sense to me. I was like, look, I'll give you 25 grand to get out by next Tuesday or did, by next Thursday. Do they move after that? Yeah, they do. I'm gonna put twenty five thousand dollars out there. Like you're gonna pay me twice. I'm gonna pay you twenty five grand, and I'm not gonna come after you for anything. You're just gonna sign the house over because this was this house was like, dude, it was pristine. I didn't have to do anything to it, and I was just like, we can take this. It's worth I think three eighty or something like that, or two eighty. But we're gonna be into it for at that point like one fifty, one fifty five. So I just I was either like, okay, I can be into it for one fifty five. And have it back in two weeks. And sell for 280. Or I can be into it, uh, you know, for 145, 150 if it goes through foreclosure and be in and get that in a year and a half. Yeah. No. I was like, time value of money. I'm like, dude, I'll give you 25 grand, get out because I know I can turn around, I can sell this thing. Boom, boom. I'm in and out of this thing in 60 days. Life's good. Are you new to the mortgage note industry? Have you been wanting to learn the step-by-step -step process to purchase your first mortgage note? You're in luck. We've convinced our CEO, Rick Allen, to break down everything he knows about mortgage note investing. Through a series of 50 videos, you'll get everything from start to finish of where to purchase notes, how to purchase notes, and all of Rick's investing techniques he has developed over the many years. From performing note tactics to non-performing notes, Rick gives you everything he knows about investing. Bonuses include our glossary of industry terms, Rick's own proprietary calculators he created to evaluate notes, discounts from our partners, our Rolodex of vendors, a private Facebook group, along with a lot more. We've packed so much content into the Academy to take you from beginner to expert in no time. To learn more about the Academy, go to academy.paperstack.com slash welcome. Again, that is academy.paperstack.com slash welcome. So people that are watching the video that are maybe new, like what, how do you approach the conversation of cash for keys? On the real estate side, as a tenant landlord situation, you basically just call them and say, hey, look, this is the deal. Not at all. You, it starts with looking at it because every cash for keys is going to make, a, like, you have to make sure it makes sense on the deal, right? right. You have to look at it and say, does it make sense? Do I want to do a cash for keys right now? Does it make sense? Do I want the property back? And there's a lot of things that could, there's a lot of variables that could come into that. It, it might be, is where, what neighborhood is it in? Do I really want to take somebody who's living in this house and pull them out of the house and now I've got a vacant home sitting there? Okay. Because at that point, what happened? Didn't people come in? Your, to, your, to, your copper's missing, yeah. your air conditioner is gone. Yeah. Kids came in and vandalized. So there's any number of things that could happen. Yeah. You want to just look at it and say, okay, do I really want to, to take, do I want to do the cash for keys thing right now? Does well, it make sense? Okay. So it's, it's evaluating does cash for keys make sense on each deal. And, and then once does, you figure out it does, and you're like, okay, I want to move forward. Like, how does that phone call? We would always open it up with a letter and right. I, we would send them a letter. We probably would put it into a FedEx envelope and FedEx it to them. Do they open it? It's so they crazy. open it, yeah. Anytime you get something that looks like that, like snail mail, like I know, I can already tell you, even though it's got a stamp and everything, I get enough from Meridian Trust 
there's your plug, Meridian Trust, that I know that they're trying to buy my house. So I don't, I'm like, this is just garbage. I'm not even do it. And they probably don't even know who our company is, mm. right? They, because we use a servicer. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is we're, we're sending out a, a letter to them and we called it our options letter. And it would say, hey, we bought your loan. This is who we are. We have a mission-based company. We want to help you. Well, we want to work with you. So we want to come out with a solution that's going to work for everybody. We're not like the banks. We have some more flexibility. Let me know. If, if you're interested in talking, please just call. Here are the options you have right now. You can go through foreclosure. You can do a short sale. You can do a cash for keys. Um, or maybe we would leave loan modification in there. We added that one later on when we were like, we would be willing to modify their loan. If we weren't willing to modify their loan, that one was not an option. <laughs> Unless, of course, they had a bunch of money to put down, then mm. we would do it. We would send them that, and usually getting that FedEx in the mail, we would be able to track it. We'd be able to see when they got it, and then we would wait. Smart. And we would say, okay, we'll give them three or four days. If they didn't call us in three or four days, we'd reach out to them. Via phone? Yeah. Okay. We would, hey, this is so-and-so. We bought your note. We sent you a FedEx. Want to make sure you received it. Wanted to know if you had any questions and want to know how you want to handle all this. And then you got to do all sorts of, hey, we're a debt collector, this, all that stuff to cover your butt mm -hmm. prior to right when you got the phone call. But once we got on the phone, I would know which way I wanted it to go. And then it was trying to figure out if that matched what they thought was a good idea. And so you'd steer the conversation based off their responses. I'd ask probing questions. Mm, and right. I'd ask certain questions. It would, would set down swim lanes. Ha, okay. I just learned that from the guys at PAX, by the way. PAX is great. PAX Momentum is this accelerator that we're participating in as paper stack. And it's just fantastic. Super cool, man. Super it, cool. It's good. So we would lay down swim lanes, okay. right? And I didn't know it was called that. But yeah, we'd lay swim lanes. And this is the different routes we were going to go. And this is, we're going to stay in between our swim lanes now. And you would, if you were going to pitch them a, a cash for key situation. It's always, they're pretty much always going to be upside down at this point. Okay. We've done it before to where they weren't upside down. Mm -hmm. We're like, dude, we just got like before the one that we've talked about in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. That lady was not upside down, but we offered her five grand because she said she was done with the house. And so we got it. We paid her four or five grand to take, to give us the house that we were now into for 40 and sold it for 95 or whatever it was. Wow. Yeah. But really like this, you're doing cash for keys. It's look, the reason for doing it is I just, I see that this is the fastest way that I can get the property. I'm going to spend the money anyways. And that's a big thing that I think a lot of people need to remember is if it's, I'm going to either foreclose on these people or I'm going to give them cash for keys. One of those two is I'm spending the money anyways. One of them usually results in nine months. And the other one happens very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I explain that to people. I'm like, listen, it's pretty simple. I guess I, I have this much budgeted for my foreclosure. I'm either going to give it to you and let you like rip this chapter of your life out. And let's just, let's pretend like it didn't happen. And not have a foreclosure on your and record. not have a foreclosure on your record. And not have a, a, the potential for me to come after you. Mm. Right? I'm going to do that. Or... I'm going to spend the money with the attorneys. And next thing it's, we've got, we, it's, they're going to come after you. And then if I get a judgment and I can't get my money back out of it, I can come after you for the rest of it. Now, I, I typically don't do that. It's happened a few times and somebody provoked it mm. on purpose. And they thought that I was, but typically it's not the, the route you want to go. I'm trying to squeeze blood from a rock. It doesn't happen very often. But the cash for key met method is actually beneficial to them if they actually do know, if they can see a little forethought that, hey, I'm not going to, I'm not going to win this one. Yeah, of course. And, and, and yeah, you let it upside know. down. You haven't been paying. It's yeah, you have, you're upside down. You haven't been paying. Like, look, you're behind $67,000. Yeah. Can you give me 35 or 40 grand right now? And I can work with you on the rest. Well, that's a steep hill to climb for anybody, right? Yeah. For if, if they hadn't been paying their mortgage, it's a pretty steep hill. So typically you're giving them an option when they don't have any other options. Mm -hmm. And on the $25,000 one, yeah. Like, hey, I'll give you 25 grand. And yeah, so that's not bad. Cause then at, at, if you give them just say average $10,000, enough, that's enough to find a place, enough to put a down deposit, a deposit down, right. start your life over. 
even hire a moving company or, or at least run a moving van. Like all that stuff, at least gets you back, cuts that chapter out of your life. You walk away free, free and clear. I would imagine a lot of these people that are in those situations know the dire part that they're in that, hey, I'm upside down. Why am I paying for this house? Because it's not worth what it was, right? Yeah. And, and sometimes some people might disagree. Some people might say, I, I wouldn't do cash for keys. I'm either just gonna, I've always had the mindset that like, if you give some people a little something or a lot of something, like, I, like they feel like they won. They feel, well, like, they feel like they won, but also it's look, what's, you got to be smart about it. What's the fastest way to get my result? And I was just saying, a foreclosure was not going to cost me 25 grand. It was, it would cost me half that. But at the time, it was a year to a year and a half for a foreclosure if nothing went wrong. Yeah. And as soon as they get an attorney, and as soon as they start filing bankruptcies, a year to a year and a half can turn into three years. And it's, it's like removing all doubt off the table. Yeah. It's, I'm just going to do this and sign, have them sign it over so that way I can move forward. And so that's the cash for keys is a very powerful tool. Yes. Yeah, super powerful. And so it's used in tenant landlord situations. Yeah, tenant landlord and notes. And notes if you want to get the property back or at post foreclosure, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I said post foreclosure. You, the tenants, the borrower's still in there. You've taken the property back and you're like, look, it's in the winter time. They're not going to foreclose or this person could put up a fight or anything else like that. The, it's important to also understand that once the foreclosure has been complete, the amount that I'm offering for a cash for keys drastically drops because I now have legal possession of the deed. That makes sense. And the cost to evict is much cheaper. Mm. We're talking 500 to 1,000. So I'll usually, I'll usually level up there, maybe to go to 1500 or two grand. And I always, I never give everything to them up front. I always, I always say, look, I'll give you half now when you sign this. And then the rest of it, when you're out by this date and the place is left broom swept. Because if you give them everything up front, there's a great chance they're not going to hit their deadline. And I might not give them half. I might give them a quarter. And sometimes say, look, I'll leave it with an attorney They'll, so it's an escrow. But I'll give them some money up front so they know that I'm for real. But then I say, look, you got to have the place broom swept because if you give them everything up front, they might not be out. And if you give them, if they do get out, there's a good chance they're leaving the place full of junk. They just pitch the keys and they walk out. And then you're stuck with $3,000 worth of cleanup. cleanup. Interesting. Wow, that's a it's an interesting strategy, interesting strategy used in real estate and in note. This kind of cra crosses the both boundaries. So if you're actually a real estate uh, investor or somebody into the real estate space, don't neglect the note space. It's um, a lot more. I would say more blue ocean. There's a lot of competition in the real estate space. Um, yeah, it's so a lot of opportunities still in the note space. Yeah, and you want to start learning now when the market turns. There's going to yeah. be a little bit, there's going to be more inventory. Yes, yeah, that's it. This yeah, is that was episode. a good one. But yeah, if you are wanting to hear something specific about real estate or notes, be sure to leave it in the comment below and tell us what you want to hear. And if you have uh, never seen notes or never done anything with notes, there's a investing in notes series on our channel, the Paper Tech, um channel, and you can learn. It'll be the same guy going through all the notes specific stuff that you can break down and understand notes at a, at a high level. And then from there, just continue your, your journey into the note space. Yeah, I'm thinking the last episode we gave away a shirt. I don't know. What would you guys think about if we gave away a note one time? If we gave away a note. Now, it's not. I'm not giving you a $110,000 note for free, but it would be something where maybe we give away a note and we help them work through it, or we give away the opportunity to have us come in and offer some guidance on a note. That'd be pretty cool. Yes. I don't if know. you like that, yeah, let us know if you let like that. Let us know what you'd like. We'll We'll think about it. I'm not giving it nothing yet, but we're just throwing ideas out there. Yeah, yeah, that's a big one. Give away a note. I might actually leave a comment myself. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, All right, we appreciate it. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya.